I want to share with you a very nice feature that we have in Cubase to transpose music from one key to another in a very fast and efficient way. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to click that notification bell. And this is something very important to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And that also helps the channel a lot. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share and to like. I also have a free workshop for you on how to build the perfect mix template. In this workshop, I share with you how I build my own mix template to speed up my workflow every time I start a new mix. So check it out, the link is down below. Now let's jump into today's topic and talk about transposing music in Cubase, how we can achieve so. We have like several tools in Cubase that will help us to transpose a full song in a very quick way. And I also covered some of those features in one of my other videos that I'm gonna link right on top. So go watch this one, because what I'm gonna show you in this video is a feature that I did not mention in my older video. So if you watch both videos, you are gonna be covered. Now, transposing music can be very useful, especially when working on an arrangement. Whether you're singing the song yourself or you're working with a singer, like I'm going to do next week on my next production, it's very important that you are working on the correct key. Now, I'm not a singer, so when I work on a piece of music, I don't necessarily work with a singer in the room at the same time that I'm working on that piece of music. So I'm just gonna go along and write in whatever key I'm working on at the moment, and then I'm gonna decide afterwards if I need to change the key or not to fit the singer I'm gonna work with. And I'm gonna work on that step when arranging a song before I jump into the whole recording process. Okay, so now let's jump in Cubase and check this out. Now in Cubase, this is a song I've been working on lately. Um, if you've been following this channel, you probably probably heard that one before. Now next week, the lead singer is going to come at the studio and we're going to work on vocal arrangements and also recording all the main vocals. But I want to make sure that the key of the song that at the moment is E minor, I want to make sure that E minor is the perfect key for her voice, you know, that will fit her voice well. And if E minor is not the perfect key, I'm going to have to look for another key. And to do so, I'm going to use a very cool feature in Cubase called the Project Root Key that you can find on top of the project window. If you don't see that option, you just need to go to the top right of the project window, click on Setup Toolbar, and make sure that Project Root Key is checked on. And that will allow me to change the key of the full project with only one click. And there's a lot of people that don't know about this feature. And honestly, it's a very cool one. So I'm going to show you how I set that up in Cubase, and then I'm going to show you something very cool that you can also do with the project root key. First, what we need to understand is that the project root key will affect all audio and media events that already have some key information on them. And to check if that's the case, select any media event or audio event and look right on top on the info line, you will also see a root key uh, info. And now at the moment, this selected event has no key information on it. If you don't see the root key on the event info line, what you need to do is to click again, make sure you have an event selected, click on the setup info line and make sure root key is selected. Now, by selecting one or several events, you'll be able to add a key information on those selected events. By clicking on root key and add the original key, of the recording. So this is what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do this for several uh, events at the same time. So I'm going to start by all of my audio events because you need to do them separately, like audio separately from media events. I'm going to select all the audio events of the project, uh, except all percussive and drum loops. You know, those I don't want to select because I don't want the, uh, the project root key to affect all of my drum loops and drum samples. You know, I want those to keep the original sound they are at. You know, they're not melodic type instruments. I'm just going to focus on melodic instruments like vocals, bass, synths, guitars, pianos, and so on, you know. So I'm going to make sure my audio events are selected. Then I'm going to go right on top on the info line on the root key. I'm going to select E because I know that the original key of the song is E minor. Now, all of those events will have a root key, an individual root key of E, okay, so which is perfect. And then I'm going to do the same for all my MIDI events. But again, everything related to melodic type instruments. And I'm going to select again E as the root key. Now, if we listen to the original key of the song,
Okay, now I'm gonna change the, uh, the root key of the project to C. Let's go to D minor instead. So it's a very fast way, you know, to change from one key to another. Uh, something you can also do, you know, for audio especially, is uh, to select all of your audio events. And uh, while you're adding your root information on those audio events, you can also make sure that the, uh, the algorithm is set up to elastic pitch, okay, which is going to work better. It's going to sound better than um, the one that I had by default, which was elastic time. Very good for time stretching. Uh, but for pitch shifting, uh, you're going to be better off with Elastic Pro Pitch, which is going to work very well. So this is how easy it is to be able to change the full key of a song by using the project root key. Now, there's other ways you can you can transpose uh, your music in Cubase, and I actually made a video on that like I was mentioning earlier. I'm going to leave the link on top again and check it out. On that video, I covered the transport track where you can automate key changes on a project, which is is also very cool. Uh, but now let me show you one last thing uh, you can do with uh, with the project root key active. Okay, let me change that to let's go in D minor. Now let's add a keyboard loop. I'm gonna go down to uh, night call, and uh, I'm gonna go with one loop that is in minor. Okay, I'm going to try this one. I'm going to drag this one straight on uh, straight on my project. Let me bring this up. I'm going to change the color. Now, as you can see, the root key of this one is in G, and my project root key is in D. Let's have a listen. So by having the project root key activated and dragging that loop straight into my project, um, that loop already had a key information on it. Cubase was able to pitch shift that loop straight on the correct key of the project, which is awesome. So this is a very fast and efficient way to build up a production. And you can also fine tune uh, the loop if you want to. Like right now, I think it's a bit off. And if I want to just fine tune it, I just need to go and select again my loop and drag up and down the fine tune values to fine tune the, uh, the pitch of that loop. Okay, so you get the idea. One last thing, when you choose the project root note, everything afterwards that you record on the project, the root note will be applied on those recordings, whether it's an audio or a MIDI recording. So if you set that up from the beginning of the recording, the only thing you'll need to pay attention to is to make sure that all of your drums and percussive recordings which will, in that case, uh, which will have the, uh, the root key information on them. You have to make sure that these are not affected by future key changes on your project. And to do so, you select all of your drums and percussive events, MIDI and audio. You go on top under Global Transpose and uh, you make sure that Independent is selected instead of Follow. Okay, so this way, those events will not be affected by any future key changes on your project. All right, so this is gonna be it for today. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. And again, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Until next time, take care and see you.